I truly believe that what I saw that day was indeed something real. This happened to me back when I was just a teenager. I was 14 and visiting extended family in Missouri. They kind of live out in the sticks, so it took a while to get all of us out there. All the meanwhile, my father getting lost a few times just trying to find it. After we had, our plan was to stay there for about a week and then move on to go see my grandfather and grandmother who live in upstate New York. While we were here, I had some cousins that I hadn't seen since I was very little, so reconnecting with long forgotten family was very great. I do remember that one evening, we were out there at nighttime. We had a big bonfire out in the backyard. My cousins that I hadn't seen in forever were telling me spooky stories, trying to scare me, but I wasn't buying it. Then we got onto the topic of exploring, and they got onto the topic of Bigfoot. I wasn't a believer in Bigfoot, so again, didn't scare me at all. Then they start talking about zombies, and that's when they start mentioning that there's an old gravesite just beyond the trees somewhere down the way. It's a very old gravesite that has been there long before this house was ever built. Instead of being demolished, it was just kind of left there, and the forest grew around it. They kind of pulled the whole pet cemetery vibe, you know, where you can bring a dead cat and bury it there, and it's supposed to come back with some evil magic or something like that. But again, I wasn't buying it. However, the thought of exploring an uncharted spooky graveyard did pique my interest, and I asked them if we can go see it. They kept making comments like, yeah, but you're gonna be scared and the Bigfoot will get you. I couldn't count the times that I rolled my eyes. It just became a passing conversation and we ended up moving on to different things, and the days went by before the whole gravesite thing would ever be brought up again. I believe it was a few nights later, when a couple of my cousins were getting ready to go on a night hike, and they asked me if I wanted to join in, and to go show me the gravesite. At this time, I had completely forgotten all about it. I was excited, so of course I said yes. My father and my mother were very lenient people, not to mention forgiving, and I was 14, so I don't think they really could care. They wanted to make sure I had the proper flashlights and equipment and what have you. Luckily for me, my extended family was also partial pack rats, so we had everything from headlamps to big mag flashlights that the cops used to use. Don't ask me how they acquired all this stuff. I think they hunted garage sales like madmen and bought as much as they could. They were what I'd like to call preppers, so they weren't short on anything survival related. It was me and three of my other cousins, and we decided midnight would be the perfect time to go out. I can remember that night pretty vividly. It was so dark with all the cloud coverage, and there wasn't much light. It's probably a good thing that we had high quality flashlights. We had to cross a couple large pastures and through about half a mile of woods. During the trip, I remember complaining, saying that this is further than you guys made it seem, while giving me the whole, it's just a bit further rhetoric. I'm sure you've all heard that one before, when somebody tells you something is just right there. They were right though. When we got to it, it was incredibly hard to notice at first, because things have been so overgrown. This gravesite was so old that we couldn't really find any information on it at first. There was a big stone slab in front that had been taken over by the years of growth in the forest, but the writing was so worn away. It was illegible. The grave site was smaller than I expected it to be, maybe 30 graves in total, with some not having much of a tombstone left at all. Most names we saw had been so weathered away that we had a hard time making out dates and names, but a couple of the dates we saw were in the 1800s. The whole grave site felt forgotten about as if we had stumbled onto an old relic of time. The forest was so thick on all the surrounding sides of the gravesite. Massive pine trees and thick brush pretty much kept all visibility nil. The trees were so tall around here that I'm sure even during the day, there probably wasn't a whole lot of room for daylight. We spent a little bit of time going through the site from grave to grave, seeing what we could find for information and to get a real feel for how old this place really is. There wasn't really much of a fence or bordering, at least anything that was left. 
This was pretty primitively built, so whenever this gravesite was erected, it probably didn't have a whole lot of money put into it. This would lead me to believe that this gravesite was probably owned by somebody extremely poor. In fact, the most expensive things that were on the gravesite were probably the tombstones, and even these were falling apart and eroded away from heavy weathering. There was a single stone though that had been set apart from the other stones, which was one of the last graves we were going to go check out. It was larger than the rest, and kind of in a weird circular shape I had never seen. We figured it might have been somebody important. This grave was also away from the rest of the graves by probably about 20 to 30 feet in its own little area. Potentially an owner of the land, a mayor, somebody of power. This gravestone had much less erosion than the other ones. And in fact, the writing on it was even much more legible as well. The thing that was odd to me and all of us was the gravestone didn't have a name but I'll never forget what it said. Master of Coven, Priest of Black. We kind of chuckled to ourselves saying, what? What does that mean? The date was from 1806 to 1890. We decided to spend a little more time looking around before calling it a night, but there really wasn't much left to look at. As we're gathering ourselves, getting ready to leave, we begin to hear what sounded like heavy wings flapping then, the most horrendous feeling hit us like a fist to the gut. Everything around us went from calm to downright terrifying. I never have gone from calm to complete and utter fear in such a short amount of time in my life. We're hearing these wings flap, and it sounded extremely close by, up in the trees. We all looked at each other, confused, because we're wondering what kind of bird that's this large is flying around at this time of night. We heard the loud crash of something very large standing on a thick branch around us. We shined our lights around to see what was there, and not even 50 feet away from us, on a branch, was this gargoyle looking creature glaring at us. When we flashed our lights, it spread its wings and gave us this vicious scream like it was there to kill us. It's important for me to really describe to you just how ugly this thing was. This thing was massive and had to have been easily the size of a lion, if not bigger. I mean, it was huge, and sitting up on this top thick branch, probably 16 or more inches in diameter, if I had to guess. I mean, any thinner of a branch, and there's no way that a branch would have held the weight of whatever this was. It looked just like a gargoyle, but much more evil. It was very smoky charcoal gray in skin color, and we all can recall the faint smell of a sulfur-like smell. It had piercing red eyes and millions of jagged pointed teeth. It must have been watching us. I don't know where it came from or how it got there, but it was one of the most awful experiences I've had. It spreading its wings at us like it did and screaming at us gave me nightmares for years afterward. It was total evil. We all screamed louder than we ever have and took off running back to the house faster than any of us have ever ran before. Making it back to the house in record time, my cousins were checking behind us constantly to see if we had been followed by that thing. After making it into the house, we weren't quiet about at all what happened. We're screaming and sobbing, waking up just about every other adult in the process. My parents and family freaked the heck out. Here are a bunch of teenagers, 14 and 19, crying like babies and shaking over what we all just saw. There were four of us to attest to all seeing the same thing. Surprisingly, our parents and family actually kind of believed us, and I will say, thank the Lord for all four of us seeing it versus just one. I do believe it added so much more validity and credibility to our story. Our parents just hugged us and comforted us. We eventually calmed down, but we all slept in the living room that night after being awake for hours and hours. I mean, you don't easily go to sleep after something horrendous like that. The next morning came and went, and we never really talked about it again. It was never brought back up on that trip, and things sort of returned to normal for the remainder of short time we were there. There was no more mentioning hikes out in the woods or anything like that. We just didn't talk about it. My one cousin, though, was really quiet after it, 
and he didn't speak much or show much emotion the following days. I think we all process trauma and fear differently. I respected it. It wasn't until later on in the years to come that we would talk about the event again in passing and learn more details here and there. Later on, I learned that a coven is actually kind of a secret group of witches that conduct witchcraft. They're generally ruled by a high priestess and a high priest, or sometimes one or the other, sometimes same-sex couples as well. Whoever this person remained nameless, but they were clearly the leader of a witch's coven. I think we stumbled upon a coven gravesite that was potentially family ran. I'm not too sure, since I tried to research a sentence and haven't been able to find anything on it. Whatever demonic being we saw that night is what I believe to be the guardian of that gravesite. You think with that kind of graveyard, it would possess some sort of off-putting demonic energy or bad feelings, but it didn't. I don't recall feeling anything out of place until that one moment of extreme fear. Listen, I know my story sounds crazy and probably made up, or like some sort of rookie horror fiction story, but it happened to me, and I don't really tell a lot of people, because most will write me off. I have to live with the experience, and I figured telling people like you, who could share my story, would be the best way to overcome it, and to live with it. Edit. In the future. Hi. I emailed you a few months back about the gargoyle encounter that I believe I had encountered in my teens. I had expressed to you at the time that my firm belief was that this creature was the guardian of this family coven, or some sort of small operated coven. Well, since I emailed you that story, I reached out to my extended family that still lives over on that property, and I was able to get a little more information on it. Apparently they know a lot more about it than I did. What happened is long ago, one of the first few settling families that had started developing the land there and living there had formed a secret coven together in which they would practice black magic. It was actually a band of about four or five families, with the family that owned my relative's property being the main ones operating the coven. It was run by a lone man, whom they called the Black Priest, and he operated all things within this coven. The graves in that area are all from those families that participated in this coven of witchcraft. Not all family members served in the coven, but it sounds like most did. We couldn't find much about the nitty gritty details other than that there was heavy witchcraft going on. But I couldn't find anything conclusive, like on sacrificial rituals or things like that. I was never able to find out the head priest's name either, the one whom ran the coven. It sounds like he and the coven kept on the down low pretty well and operated entirely underground. Not literally underground, just secretive. He is actually still buried there today along with much of his family and the other families that served in that coven. Then, I guess as the years went by after he passed, much of the coven split up and fell apart, with the remaining practicers operating in smaller covens. But he was actually one of the last ones to die and wanted to be placed at that gravesite. After he had passed, his family passed the land on to other owners who decided to leave the gravesite as is and the land just grew around it for a long time. It was kind of just left abandoned. It borders state game land now, but the gravesite itself falls into that relative's property, so it's just been left there, left to rot and be forgotten to time. After the ownership had been passed on, it had finally gotten passed on a couple of more times where my relative's house was then built and used for farming or other stuff, but that entire forest and forest area was left completely intact and untouched. I believe my relatives bought it right before the Great Depression in the 20s, and it's been there since. They've been updating the house ever since they've had it, since it's a house that's been in our generation for a long time. The grave site is not incredibly far back there, maybe half a mile, and with how much overgrowth there was, you wouldn't just be able to see it and go right to it. It could have been very easily missed if you didn't know it was there. Sorry, I'm not trying to make this email long, I just wanted you to have more information on my story. I wouldn't be shocked if he had placed some sort of hex or voodoo spell over that place to have some sort of demonic guardian watch over their eternal resting spot. With the witchcraft, who knows? Anyway, 
The whole thing still gives me the chills thinking about it. 